this is of the press and plus tv africa and thank you for joining us where we bring you the major headlines from our national dailies with in-depth analysis and review of most of the headlines in the dailies and joining me to do that this morning on of the press is legal limine liberos Oshuma. thank you liberos for joining us still my pleasure and we take it up firstly with the Punch newspaper and the very first headline in the Punch this morning, CBN to suspend interest payment on state debt. And that is on page 23 in the Punch newspaper. Nigeria to borrow $6.9 billion from World Bank, IMF and the African Development Bank. 5G demonstration trials done with 4G spectrum, says Minister. ONU to unveil first Nigerian-made ventilator today. 67 Togo returnees detained in Seme, face 14-day quarantine. Lagos still tracing 2,293 contacts, battening local transmission. And Chinese doctors, nurses to undergo tests, isolation on arrival, says the federal government. Eight fresh COVID-19 cases surface in Ogun, Kwara, Edo, FCT, and Rivers. Heavy traffic in Lekki as Lagos residents flout lockdown order. And Oshun local government boss dies, family knocks UCH. Federal government declares Friday, Monday, Easter holiday. And U.S., Canada evacuate over 575 citizens from Nigeria. Petrol subsidy gone forever, says the NNPC. House party makes reactions greet Funke Akindele husband's conviction. And police arrested killers of Fasoratin's daughter, says Oduma King. There's some more making the headlines in the Punch newspaper. And quickly, let's come to the issue of borrowing, which is very critical to our economy. And we're still a borrowing nation. And at this point, um, we see the need for us to borrow, um, the need for us to borrow $6.9 billion from the World Bank and the IMF. I need your two cents on this. Yeah. Is, this is this important at this point in time? Yeah, very important at this time. And, and then, um, um, for me, it's not a problem to borrow. It's what we use the borrowed fund for that um, that should concern us. And means and then, to pay, and means also for the yeah, payment if we, of those if, loans. If, yeah. if it is used judiciously, yes. um, the means to pay will not be a problem right. because um, some of the, these funds would have been used, you know, in, in sectors that would, um, you know, help, you know, promote trade, okay. international trade, and then, you know, um, to pay would would um, naturally, you know, flow slim, seamlessly. But is, the problem is when it is not used judiciously and it finds its way into private pockets. And then we're now, mean, we're now meant to pay, you know, from um, our collective resources. That's where the problem is. You know, if every nation of the world, as we speak now, because of the global crisis, you know, are looking for ways to borrow. And then the fact also that, um, you know, the only monoproduct that we have, oil, right. you know, if the price is also going down uh, as we speak. Uh, you know, should give us cause for concern. And so, while, you know, federal government is borrowing, they also, the funds should be used, you know, judiciously. And then, we should also find a way of, you know, using these funds to diversify, you know, in areas of strength, which yeah. is agriculture. As we speak now, the world is looking forward to, to, to food. All right, L let's, let's put on diversification for a moment now. Ma many economies, uh, like the fact that we have an already diversified economy, that what is lacking is funding of those um, sectors that have been diversified, that is not so much of funding being made um, available, like agriculture, just rightly said not, not yeah. right now, that if the, if the proper funding is done for agriculture, then it could become one of our, our revenue generators. Yeah, that's, you know. that's what it means. When, when you, it's not enough to diversify on paper. Yes. Um, and then, you know, you make so much noise about closing your borders and, you know, the fact that you, you want to diversify when there are no funds. For me, agriculture without processing is poverty. And so we need to invest in processing our agricultural product. I give you an example. Cote d'Ivoire makes so much from cocoa, you know, about three point something billion uh, dollars annually. But if you know how much Switzerland makes from processing of cocoa, cocoa. to chocolate, about seventy billion dollars annually. So it's the same thing. You buy um, what do you call it? Um, uh, crude oil from Nigeria, and then you process processes, you have about 16 byproducts of crude oil, and you know you make so much money yeah. from it. So that's why we, there's need for us truly to inject funds in processing. You plant so much cassava, and then do you know that the stash you use in, in um, some of the stash you use in keeping and preserving, uh, what do you call it, uh, noodles, is made from cassava? How many people know? So if you add, you know, if you, develop, you, you channel funds to processing, 
you definitely make so much money yeah. than just farming. You know, interestingly, you didn't make mention of cocoa. I remember growing up as a, as a, as a young boy then in Kaduna State. Um, we, I, I'm very familiar with the pyramid of granite in Kano yeah. and um, so much cocoa from, from the granite West. Oil, you know those days and yes, and one would just wonder what, what happened to all of those? Oil. I mean, what happened to it was yeah. the discovering of oil in Nigeria. And then, you know, you now had leaders who became lazy and were not thinking outside the box. And so they thought that oil would remain forever. And God was so bad that we had a head of state who said money was not a problem without spending money. General you know, will go on. Yes, yes. And so, you know, people, people who could, who, who should be thinking, you know, now suddenly become, um, you know, rich overnight by selling oil allocation. You know, so that's, and then when the young ones see all of this, so what it encourages is you don't really need to work hard. So that's what led us to where we are now. And I think this is the time, like I said, it's not enough to say, okay, let them borrow. Borrow, but use it judiciously. judiciously yeah. and, and, and so all the right. means to pay will be easy. All right, let's move on to other headlines from the punch this morning. Heavy traffic in Lekki as Lagos residents flout lockdown order. And you were, um, you saw the report by Maka Najegune yeah. yesterday. And it, it didn't seem to me there was any observance. But it, that seemed like normal activity going on in Najegune. You can take this, the first, um, um, uh, what do you call it, news, borrowing um, infrastructure, you can marry it with this. The fact that, you know, people are unable to sit down, you know, including the rich, the so-called rich in Lekki as is, you know, are unable to sit down in one okay. place because two things. Some, some will need to go restock, you know, some will need to, you know, also look for something to ease that burden of sitting at home. Yeah. And then, coupled with the fact that, yes, we had this issue of, we always have this issue of implementation of, um, of, of directives. Now, even if you arrest, where are you going to keep these people? So, diversification also comes on board. You need to diversify, diversificate punishment for people in times like this. Let your law bite, and then let appropriate sanction be melted out. Once you do that, and not the kind of crowd that we saw at the magistrate court trying to show so much strength. You can do this thing silently without you know, necessarily making so much noise about it. This will send signal to people. And then there's need for proper education. Yes. A lot of people truly are not so You know, aware. you rightly said it. I, I was expecting at this point where there's, there was a, a lockdown that the, the NOA would have been on top of their, of their responsibility, uh. you know, to sensitize, <laughs> you know, the public through... Many people were glued to their television and radio in these times, and this was an opportunity, a wind of opportunity I felt they would have taken advantage I, I of. Must, and I don't see so much being, coming I, from the NOA. I, I had consistently said that um, the DG um, Data State Orientation Agency barrister Eugene Zoom. Um, if the National Orientation Agency is doing half of the job that he is doing, you know, I would, I, the information would be everywhere at your fingertips. But unfortunately, even the, the Commissioner of Health in Lagos State seems to be doing much more than the, national, the, than the State Orientation Agency mm -hmm. in Lagos State. I would say that uh, for Lagos, you see a lot of, um, you know, officials collaborating together from the heads. Uh, and safety to yeah. environment yeah. to the minister of health to the state governor to deputy governor all of this working together to ensure but lagos being a metropolitan you know state that it is it will be difficult to enforce but i think that it is it shouldn't be left for to, to state government alone let's you know also let government also you know, find a way of partnering private individuals yeah, private, yeah. that can also help spread the message there are some of us who are you, you know, um, opinion molders, you know, help push the message down the ladder so people can actually understand. And then the palliative that the government so much talks about, now is the time to begin genuinely to find a way of ensuring that this palliative gets to the people, which is why I, I had, um, you know, expected, and I've, I've expressed this opinion before now, that the Lagos state government is in a better position to manage this crisis yeah. than the, you know, the total lockdown yeah, imposed uh, which, by which the federal I, which government. I, I thought initially that um, the, the state government, the executive government was actually was on top of the matter yes. before the decision order came to If you understand, respect, you know, what the governor had consistently said was that they were not going to have a complete lockdown, lockdown. but they were going to implement partially because they didn't want also to lock down the economy of yeah. the state. Yeah. But... We are seeing now that even it is a, a, a practical impossibility to completely lock down the economy of the state because there are some areas that you also need people to actually, you, you know, walk and, and move about. If, for example, you say supermarkets should open, 
definitely you know that people, people will need to, to patronize go back them. and patronize those places. The banks also, you need them to load their ATMs. You need people to go withdraw cash, even yeah. though we're trying to build a cashless society. Right. Quickly, now there's a, there's a concern here. Now we all know the, the epicenter of this coronavirus, COVID-19, was from Wuhan in, in, in China. Now Nigerians have expressed their their, their reservations about the, the the Chinese doctors and nurses who are coming in to to help us out in this. And the the federal government is saying they will they undergo tests and isolation on arrival. Now. Uh, yeah, I've listened to arguments. It's worrisome. For, I mean, yes. Yes, it is. It is worrisome. Uh, people had um, had um, uh, given example with the case of Italy that they were able to manage it um, uh, until the Chinese doctors came, and then the numbers skyrocketed, and that so we should watch it. For me, these are these are genuine concerns. Yeah. And so what the government should do is take in all of this concern. We need, we cannot shy away the, from the fact that we actually need assistance. Even tracking, you know, uh, um, you know, contact yes. has been a major problem. If the, even in the papers, too, yes. the federal government has said, the state government has said it's you know been difficult to track certain numbers, even testing. You know, so we need assistance. Yeah. It's obvious we need assistance from wherever we can get. Yeah, but the, but the, 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 role, the role is why from Chinese? I mean, you no, know why? Because they, the, Chi Chinese why the Chinese government yes. have been able to curtail, yes. you know, this even in Wuhan. And uh, But one thing we should also understand is that the infrastructure in place in, in this country yeah. is not the same. Yet. So it's yet. Just, not just about the doctors or the people. Also, we are doing, you know, fantastically well in Lagos. So what we need to do also is to extend that thing that we're doing in Lagos and to you know, have more hands. But we need, like I said, there's need for us to have a holistic approach towards it. Yes, if government is going to test or quarantine them for 14 days, we need to genuinely be interested in solving the problem, problem yeah. and not for political reasons, reasons also. Right. And so that's why I think, yes, we need assistance, but we should be very careful so we don't push the wrong narrative right. to say, no, yes, Chinese uh, were skeptical of them, but we've always had them here. we we'll have them building our race, we we'll have them, you know, in almost every yes. sector. You know, so if they are giving us a helping hand, just the same way they are giving helping hands to others, we should take these helping hands, but we also should do what we need to do to ensure that we don't, you know, escalate the problem, you know, from the position where uh, we are. Let's take a look at the nation headlines in the nation this morning. My experience in isolation by Makinde, Funke Akindele husband convicted, Naramari Mali for trial, and federal government to hire 774,000, says minister. And COVID-19 role deepens over 18 Chinese doctors. But Dabia Mila, they must be quarantined. SGF minister seeks support for action and federal government targets 2.7 trillion Naira stimulus cash. And as of today, from um, the report globally, we have about 1,329,307 case, confirmed cases of COVID-19 globally with 73,831 deaths, and we have 277,329 recovered. And in Nigeria, as of today, we have 238 confirmed cases with five deaths still, and we have 35 people recovered and Doc, um, Governor McIndy was one of those people who had earlier um, tested positive and two tests um, result now has proven him um, to, to be to be negative and he still well he's still awaiting the second result as I, as I said yesterday I mean I just I don't I need your take on that yeah um, I, I think um, good news yeah. um, but um, I, I want to see more of um, the people you know those at the lower, at the lower, at the lower ladder, lower ladder you know, who are, were tested positive and who have recovered. You know, I like uh, the fact that um, the lady from um, um, the Lagos um, Center for um, Disease uh, Control, you know, she came out to narrate her experience. Let's hear more of that. Yes. So that people also will not think this is a disease for, you know, the governors and the wealthy alone. The, the elite. So yeah. let them also understand that this disease is closer than they, they think. So that done, I also think that um, our government really is not doing enough. You know, it's not enough to count numbers. Um, it's not enough to say, look, yes, it's good for people to maintain social distancing. You know, as we speak now, what are our plans for the next 14 days? What are our plans for the next three months? Because whether we like it or not, this crisis will yeah. definitely 
create another financial crisis. It will create unemployment. Will create... So what are we doing to ensure that, you know, after all of this, what are the plans in place? Yeah, government yes. is borrowing. Yeah, I listened to the Minister for um, Finance yesterday, you know, and the um, Minister for Safe for Budget and Planning and, you know. But we need to do more, apart from all of this borrowing, stimulus packages, that people are even complaining and not getting to, you know, uh, uh, everybody. Now, yeah, so, now ne needing to do more now, will it be in the area of our health sector or total reform? Um, I, I got it reliably from 2015, there's been an increase in the budget for the health sector, but we don't see so much of this translating to, you know, better infrastructure and um, better um, um, hospitals for people to walk yeah. in. What, what do you think might, might be the, the blow after all of this is blown out? Yeah, you, Do you think you this will improve anything in our health this, sector? Like, 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 now you see, I did see also during the week that the people who are people who were used to rush abroad for treatment, now we are all locked in. And then the fact that we had, we were able to put up a hospital within five days also shows the can-do spirit of, you know, at the average Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at these positives. Look at these positives and find a way of ensuring that we replicate them in most sectors. There are quick gains from this. And that so, we, if you look at all of that, and then lastly, we also need to find a way of ensuring that we use this to kickstart development of our infrastructure. Infrastructure are definitely not just you know, in the area of uh, the health sector. Health sector yeah. We need also research. Now, we imagine celebrating uh, what do you call it, the, the minister unveiling and celebrating v the, vent the vent ventilator. ventilator, the first, you know, locally made yeah. vent ventilator. When in the first republic, we had even developed, you know, we had more inventions. And now we're celebrating the making of a Nigerian inve uh, a yeah. ventilator. It's, it's, it's a milestone so, we're celebrated, isn't it? You, so we should look <laughs> in. We're much more than this. Yes. So this should be an opportunity for us to look inward and say, look, we can actually solve our problems. Yes, we need assistance, but there are a lot of you know people who can you, you know bring solution on yes. the, on the table. And then also for the fact that we're able to treat patients even without foreign aid and intervention. It's enough for us to say, you know what, we can actually also create a vaccine. What, will it be a crime that the vaccine came from Africa or from Nigeria? Right. We can achieve all of this if we put our mind to it. All right, quickly, in The Guardian, um, we have just a few headlines. I'm still on actress Akindele Husband sentenced to 14-day community service and how police, military extort at COVID-19 checkpoints. That's something that, that we need to look at, really. And I experienced this some days ago on my way back home where a police officer stopped some people and then me for proper uh, means of identification. The next thing was asking them, uh, what do you have for me? Uh, you see, this is another, another area we also need to very look at. Some of these police, journalists are also, you know, in the front line of this, yeah. this um, fight against COVID-19. You have the head workers. You also have the security enforcement agent. Some are reckless, which is why I had cause to argue with some of my colleagues. When you talk about um, the emergency rule, application of the emergency rule, oh. the government will be everywhere. Some of our zealous officials, if not used to set example, you know, they will unleash mayhem on the people. I yeah. saw it. And then secondly, these same people that you put at checkpoint, how well are we catering for them? You just leave them there to... to so you, some of them become beggars. Uh, well, guy, your boys are here. Oh, what do you have for us? You know, there should be a special allowance and a special program to cater for these people. Daily allowance. Daily allowance. And, uh, you, you know, it's shameful. They were just reviewing hazard allowance for medical doctors, 5,000 naira before now. You know, so what also is the hazard allowance for these security officials at, you know, the checkpoints that are ensuring, you know, that there's strict compliance? Otherwise, they end up, you find me something, allow you go. So that would defeat the end of, you know, the essence of, of the lockdown in the first place. And then I quickly, I must say this, I like the fact, even though, you know, some, some people seem also to abuse it, I like the fact that a lot of people also have find innovative ways, creative ways, you know, of, uh, of you know, um, uh, managing this lockdown. Yeah. So you see some people in the morning, they all come out to exercise, you, you know, the crowd in uh, Bagada Express was, was, you know, some, even though too much, 
but I think we also need to manage the social All right, distancing then. thing. All right, then. Know. Legal Luminal, Liberal Sushuma, thank you for joining us on Off the Press and for your contribution. My pleasure. And that's much we can take this morning. Join us again same time tomorrow on Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark. Do have a good morning.